Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was one of the greatest players in the game. You just look at the numbers, you look at the championships, you look at the most valuable player awards that he won. He played the game in a way that very few before him or after him have even come close to doing. Ferdinand Louis Alcindor Jr. was born April 16, 1947, in New York City. By the eighth grade, he stood a towering 6'8 and was able to dunk a basketball. Kareem went to Power Memorial High School in New York and they won three city championships and he put up mega numbers. Alcindor went to UCLA where he played for legendary coach John Wooden and won three national championships. When the NCAA banned the dunk, it was sort of widely known. They didn't call it that, of course, but it was the Alcindor rule. I mean, they never said it was because of Alcindor, but it clearly was. In 1968, Alcindor converted to Islam and boycotted the Summer Olympics to protest the treatment of African Americans in the United States. There was talk of all the black athletes boycotting the 1968 Olympics. And that was the Olympics, of course, where you had John Carlos and Tommy Smith with the Black Power Salute. And Lou Alcindor did not participate in the Olympics. That's how strongly he felt about black causes. Alcindor was selected first pick of overall by the Milwaukee Bucks in the 1969 NBA Draft. He was named Rookie of the Year in 1970 and in 1971 won his first Most Valuable Player award and led the Bucks to an NBA crown. That year, Lou Alcindor legally changed his name. When Alcindor changed his name to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, it really added another layer of mystery, intrigue, and almost danger to someone who was misunderstood by the American public anyway. He wasn't that friendly, he didn't kowtow to the press, and it suddenly made him, in the eyes of a lot of people in white America, dangerous. In 1975, Abdul-Jabbar was traded to the Los Angeles Lakers, where he would win five MVP awards. He was joined by Magic Johnson five years later. Kareem and Magic Johnson were a, a great combination. Magic brought the enthusiasm and the personality to the Lakers that Kareem didn't. Kareem went about his business. A lot of people thought he was aloof, but you can't be aloof when you're playing with Magic Johnson. When those two guys put their games together, the Lakers took off. They were a dynasty. Together, they would win five NBA titles for the Lakers. The Skyhook was the most feared weapon in basketball history. People knew that if you had one possession at the end of a game, the one guy you wanted to take a shot would be Kareem with the Skyhook. After his 20th NBA season in 1989, Jabbar retired from basketball. He still holds the NBA record for total points scored. Off the court, Abdul-Jabbar tried his hand at acting, appearing in dozens of television and film roles, including Airplane and Game of Death with Bruce Lee. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar really did take advantage of being in Los Angeles and having access to Hollywood. His appearance in Airplane is something that's still quoted today, and it's something that showed that while he had a reputation of being a very serious-minded guy, he wasn't afraid to poke fun at himself and his image. In 1995, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Kareem's legacy is his consistency, his professionalism. What Kareem did year after year, even when he got to be 39, 40 years old, will quite possibly never be matched in the history of the NBA. Jabbar has written eight books, including his autobiography and a history of the Harlem Renaissance. In 2012, he was named Cultural Ambassador for the United States by then Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton. Kareem is a cultural icon because he was a very thoughtful guy. His opinions on matters outside of basketball weren't only listened to, but they mattered. He was a leader among his teammates and among other players.